Chapter Sixteen of the Flower Garden. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Janet. The Flower Garden by Ida Dandridge Bennett. Chapter Sixteen. There is no better investment for the garden than a bed of hardy lilies which should be started in the fall as early as the bulbs may be had this is often later than is desirable but the matter is entirely beyond control the best that can be done is to get orders for foreign grown bulbs placed early in the fall it is not necessary to wait for the new catalogue as the old will give the varieties an approximate cost the main thing is to get in the order early that it may be filled promptly when the bulbs arrive orders received last are filled last this means not only considerable delay but second choice in bulbs the first comers secure the best the last must take the cullings having ordered your bulbs proceed at once to make your beds better results are obtained by planting lilies in beds with fibrous rooted plants hardy shrubs and perennials that do not need frequent disturbing the lily is very impatient of moisture and water standing around the roots in winter is absolutely fatal a raised bed of peonies affords favorable conditions provided there is sufficient room between the plants for the lilies to increase from year to year as once planted they should not be disturbed if the lily bed is to be by itself an angle of a building or portion of the grounds protected by trees or adjacent shrubbery on the west and north should be chosen such a site if well drained will give good results the bed should be dug deep and mellow and enriched with old well rotted manure strict attention must be paid to this point only old well decomposed manure must be used the bed should be sufficiently rounded to shed water lilium candidum will be ready to ship in august and should be planted as soon as received all lilies are greatly injured by exposure to air and if it is necessary to keep them out of the ground for any length of time they should be well wrapped in tissue paper or otherwise protected the japanese protect their great aratum lily bulbs from the air by encasing them in a ball of clay before starting them on their long journey to the far west candidum lilies make a fall growth of leaves and must be planted early no other lily is as hardy and satisfactory with us as this they should be planted four inches deep and a foot apart each way that they may have room to increase and left undisturbed for years the soil may be made very rich with manure but none of it should touch the lily bulbs make a hole of sufficient depth and size put an inch or more of sand on the bottom place the bulbs on this and fill up with the sand packing it closely all around the bulb of the japanese lilies rubrum is most easily grown here and should be planted eight to ten inches deep planted deep they are not injured by thawing and freezing but when too near the surface the frost often throws the bulbs out of the ground lilies are not injured so much by freezing as by sudden and frequent thawings as long as the rubrum is doing well it should not be disturbed but if it suddenly fails to grow and bloom the bulb should be taken up when dormant and cleaned remove all decayed scales and look for worm nests which are usually the source of the trouble ants sometimes make nests in the lily bulb in the spring and cause the top to decay when this occurs it should be lifted cleaned and reset in a place free from ants the greatest care must be exercised in cleaning bulbs not to injure the sound scales as that will only induce further decay all the speciosum lilies are exceedingly beautiful l album is one of the finest its reflexed flowers are clear sparkling white with a green band through the center of each petal 
and a peculiar glistening appearance as though covered with water it is one of the most easily grown of the speciosum family s roseum is another handsome variety white flushed with rose and with dull crimson spots on the white ground while s rubrum has large reflexed petals of frosted white heavily bearded and spotted with rich crimson and many glistening points of white aside from the speciosum lilies there are many other fine japanese lilies the aratums easily leading in size and beauty while Krameri is a tube-shaped lily of a soft pink, Longiforum has lovely trumpets of pure white. The wonderful Lilium giganteum, six to ten feet high, sends up immense clusters of twelve to twenty creamy white flowers with purple throat. Washingtonium is another tall variety, bearing large clusters of delicate white flowers spotted with black and the grand and rare brownie eye shows a chocolate purple outside with a creamy interior the list is long but with a generous planting of well-selected varieties a succession of bloom may be had from the first blooming longiforium and candidiums in june until oratum and the late speciosum cast their ivory petals in september the general treatment of all is the same deep planting, keeping the manure from actual contact with the bulbs by packing in sand, well-drained soil, and the presence of fibrous-rooted or perennial plants near enough to absorb the surplus water from the soil. During the hot weather, give a heavy mulch of lawn clippings brought well up around the stems and water as needed. If planted deep, they will hardly require staking, as the stalks send out surface roots which not only afford nourishment, but also act as a brace to the plant and hold it firmly in its place. A heavy mulch of old manure and rough litter should be given in the winter, and the bed protected with leaves and evergreen boughs, or anything that will shed water. Spring-planted bulbs rarely do well. It is better to plant after severe cold weather sets in than to wait until spring. As long as the ground can be worked, they may be planted safely, but they should be set eight to ten inches deep. I have planted them late in December, when the ground had to be broken with an axe, and have had excellent success. The planting of hardy lilies should be done on a scale limited only by one's means and the ground at command. A few new and rare sorts should be added every year. In this way, a magnificent collection will, in time, be acquired, as they increase very rapidly under favorable conditions, and the larger the clumps of one kind, the finer the effect, so that each variety should be given abundant room to spread and develop. It is often stated that lilies left to themselves place their bulbs near the surface. Such bulbs are the small ones that form on the blossom stalk above the main bulb and lie near the surface from force of circumstances the main bulb sends its offshoots deep in the ground as in the case of our native lilies which are almost impossible to dig especially is this the case with the native flame lily the bulb of which i have never been able to reach with a trowel travelers in japan report various native lilies growing in forests among the interlacing roots of the trees, quite out of reach of any small tools. There, the aratum lily grows on wooded hillsides where the drainage is perfect and the falling leaves give a deep mulch at all times and supply the best of nourishment. Leaf mold and the roots of the trees absorb all superfluous moisture. End of chapter 16 Recording by Janet, Marysville, Washington.